Yeah. Hello, welcome oh. participants. My name is Dr. Satya Madhi and I am with my team, uh, Mr. Chanikya sir. And uh, Chanikya sir, can you please say hi? Hello guys. And, Namaskar. Yeah, Hello. and also today we have joined we, uh, by Mrs. Chanikya, that is uh, Mrs. Lakshmi Garu. Lakshmi Garu, can you please come on to the camera and say hi? Namaste everybody. Uh, Namaste Dr. Sharlaji. Namaste. And today, because it is... Yeah, because it is a women's event, uh, we have women uh, hosts also, that is uh, Mrs. Lakshmi Garu, she is none other than Chanakya sir's wife. And also here is uh, my Mrs. Kalpana. Namaste Sarla Garu, Namaste Lakshmi Garu, Namaste. 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 So thank you participants for waiting. Uh, there's a slight delay, I can see that. So we will straight away start the session. So for that, uh, we, I will first give introduction about uh, Dr. Sarala and also about the structure of the meeting. And after that, it, because it is a women event and the question and answer session will be moderated by uh, Mrs. Lakshmi Garu. So here first let us uh, introduce Dr. Sarala. And uh, be before introducing Dr. Sarala, it is better to have a few words about uh, Dr. Kadar himself. And uh, most of us know Dr. Sarala is the daughter of uh, Dr. Kadar Wali. And Dr. Kadarwali is a US written scientist and he came back to India with a clear vision and uh, uh, mission in, in his mind. And when he came back to India and Dr. Sarala involved in each and every step of Dr. Kadar's endeavors and she traveled with him to remote villages and uh, she worked with uh, uh, people from all levels at ground level. And the other few points about is Dr. Sarala is a homeopathic uh, doctor and she qualified from government homeopathic medical college and she is a gold medalist in her uh, college and also she is a qualified yoga teacher and also she is a Bharatanatyam dancer and she is married to Mr. Kushal who is an environmental engineer and we are working closely with him about the obtaining uh, uh, Ghana bull driven oils and other quality millets and uh, so we will straight away go into the session. I will explain you the format of the session. The first session, Dr. Sarala will speak for about 40 minutes. And after that, uh, we will take some questions. So some of you participants have sent us the questions and we have compiled all, all these questions and we have grouped them. And because it is a women health issues, uh, the question and answer session will be led by Mrs. Lakshmi Garu. And after that, uh, uh, Sir Janicha Sir will give about uh, uh, final uh, touch-ups and also we will announce uh, about our future events and there are some ground rules for this zoom session and we will be by default uh, muting everybody so we expect you uh, not to interfere not to speak uh, while somebody else is, else is speaking and uh, our uh, events are known for its uh, well-managed crowd and uh, well I mean professionalism of the participants and if there are any outstanding questions, we will be arranging another event in future. So uh, the remaining questions will be answered uh, later. So if you have already sent us the questions, please do not put the same question in the chat box unless you have a separate question. And uh, Mrs. Lakshmi Garu, she will uh, uh, explain the question format session just before the Q&A session. And she will uh, explain the rules and other, other stuff. So now, uh, Dr. Sarala, would you like to take over the session now? Sure, sure. Let, let, let's begin. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, people watching from various time zones. So, welcome to everyone. Today's topic we have selected as the hormonal imbalance, which is a modern day disaster. So first, let me tell you a backstory as to why this is being called a modern day disaster. So the story dates back to sometime around the 1980s itself, when my father went to the US and he was beginning his career there. And I think everyone is aware when you join a company, you need a complete medical examination or uh, every year they require you to do that from the company. So when he was there for his medical examination at a clinic, he was just being uh, interactive with the other patients in the waiting room. So one of them was there with her young daughter, probably six to eight year old girl waiting in the waiting room. And he just 
asked why are you here why are you in the waiting area why have you come to the clinic so the mother replies by saying that she is here because her daughter might have to get operated because she has severe bleeding so when he heard this he first didn't realize what she was referring to but as he thought about it he understood that what she meant was the girl was having severe menstrual bleeding and that they were considering doing an operation to remove the uterus because the bleeding was not stopping in spite of a lot of medication so this was when he was completely shaken and realized that there is something very very wrong happening that when a girl who is hardly 6 to 7 8 years old supposed to be enjoying her childhood an innocent period of her life has already attained sexual maturity back then in india from where he came the age at which girls were attaining manar used to be somewhere around 15 16 years old so how did this change happen and what what are the he started to in the 1980s came back to about 10 years later the station became quite similar to the same world that young girls at the age of 10 are attaining manar so that if this is not a disaster and most of us are just brushing it aside like it's no problem at all and like it's completely normal now so we actually are having three main disasters happening now one being the the second being the hormone imbalance and the third being the microbial imbalance at a biochemical level which we are going to be discussing in depth today and the third which is at the level of symbiosis between organisms the microbes which live inside our gut being completely destroyed so to speak about the hormone imbalance need to understand inside our body hormone which flow in the blood organs in far off parts of the body so these hormones have functions which are very wide in range it starts from simple physiological functions like digestion like assimilation of the food which we eat like reproduction and even goes up to the extent of regulating our moods resulting an imbalance resulting in the mood swings which are so commonly seen of late and even behavioral problems being associated with the hormones so basically we can say that hormones are like a supervisor in our body and if the supervisor is not working properly being as the body is going to go off and will not be happening properly point so if all the hormones are in a balance everything occurs smoothly and when the supervisors themselves don't work properly if the hormones themselves are in a state of imbalance the entire body becomes a confused state so what are the main harm there are lot of endocrine glands which secrete the hormones in our body starting right from the hypothalamus which is situated inside the brain the pituitary gland the thyroid and the parathyroid glands the adrenal glands and lastly the ovaries and the testes in women and men which are secreting the hormones the steroid hormones 
so there are several kinds of endocrine glands releasing different kinds of hormones and each one has its own specific function so what we are going to be concentrating today the main it uh, will be mainly the thyroid problems and the female genital related complaints the sexual hormone imbalance which is happening so what are the effects of this hormones going into state of imbalance they range from a mild first when you start having a hormone imbalance you might start gaining weight sudden gain of weight is one of the first symptoms of either a thyroid related issue or a, a reproductive organ steroid hormone imbalance issue and it can also lead to hair fall it can also lead to unwanted hair growth it can lead to pimples on the skin we often assume that it is the problem in the skin but pimples are also a sign that there is some level of hormone imbalance thyroid can cause water retention constipation we have problems of palpitation we have lot of lethargy weakness puffiness all the symptoms when you are developing thyroid and then of course the start to the cycles which are supposed to be regularly happening and become erratic it might come down to 15 days a 15 day cycles or they might extend to 40 days 50 days or sometimes even once in 6 months once in 8 months cycles so these are all the signs of a hormone imbalance starting in the body so why are we going into these states of hormonal imbalance so the first thing which we need to recognize is all these hormones are in a very delicate situation in the body itself so they are present in very minute quantities in the body and each one is interdependent on the other so for example the hypothalamus releases a hormone which acts on the pituitary the pituitary releases a hormone which acts on the ovaries the ovary again releases a hormone which in directly the hypothalamus and the pituitary again and thus regulate itself in a cyclic manner so at any level we can be a disturbance to cause the hormonal imbalance starting right from stress so stress is also one of the main factors which causes hormonal imbalance especially in women we see that long standing chronic stress related issues some kind of uh, feeling let down or disappointment or not achieving what they wanted to when it's present inside them for a long time they end up having factor which we find in lot of people having thyroid related issues and so not just the stress and the mental level the next cause of the hormonal imbalance of late is of course our food so of late uh, what has happened in the name of green revolution the way all our local be eliminated and on to only rice and wheat which are the cause for main cause the another revolution which took place just a few years back was the white revolution so in the name of white revolution everyone started firmly believing that there is no better food than milk milk is the complete food so everybody from young children to the old aged people started consuming milk so what is the problem with milk we have started producing so much of milk we have created so much demand for it and then producing so much of it that it would have been naturally impossible to produce so much milk so what are we doing to produce so much milk 
we have been injecting cows with hormone injections steroid injections growth hormone such hormone injections being given to the cows in order to produce more and more milk so when these injections are used and the cows produce milk the hormone residues are going to be present in the milk and we are consuming it so this is the main reason for our children having menarche at such a young age because the hormones are supposed to kick in at the age of 14 15 but what do we do we start feeding them with this milk right from a very young age so we are introducing these hormones into the body at such a young age i would even say at the tender age of just after they are born so of late it has become a trend i should say or even a huge problem because mothers are not able to produce enough milk for the babies so right from the birth we start giving them the formula milk formula milk is nothing but powdered dried cow's milk or other sources of milk which have been dried and powdered and lot of changes being done to make the nutritive value some medication some minus etc etc is present in it even if you are not giving direct cow's milk to the baby even if you are for age we are introducing these as a result of this in girls we are seeing early menarche in boys in young boys in men the result of this hormone let's not just about the women hormone problem example we have breast development in young boys which is completely abnormal we also have very low sperm count in most of the men of late it is said that a man today has half the number of sperms and part did so that is the extent to which in general it's not the sperm count has been reducing so as a result of the reduction the why is the sperm count reducing in men the hormonal imbalance so the testosterone levels in the body need to be appropriate for good production of sperm so when the hormone is in an imbalanced state there is a reduced in women early menarche is just the beginning of the problem for by that we have the biggest one which everyone is facing of late and that is pcod polycystic ovarian disease so what happens in polycystic ovarian disease every month in the body in during the active menstrual phase of the life an egg is supposed to be released from the ovary as a result of the hormones follicular stimulating hormone release from the pituitary but instead of this egg releasing from the ovary small nice bubbles start developing all over the ovary because several eggs start developing but none of them rupture and release the egg so because of this again the ovary which is supposed to secrete estrogen and progesterone even that goes into an imbalanced state as a result of this there might be delayed cycles over bleeding scanty bleeding there might be problems of spotting in between cycles all a wide range of effects which may happen it's sad that our offlet 33% of the population is suffering from the problem of pc od okay so the next problem which we mainly face women during the early stage of life the hormones are going in 
is they're all coming down in the body because of produce of an imbalance lot of women are developing lot of problems for example one would be calcaneal spur so what is calcaneal spur early morning as soon as getting as you get up the first few steps are excruciatingly painful so the heel feels like you're stepping on needles or stepping on something very painful every time you sit down for half an hour and get up your heels pain long day of standing your heels start paining so this is one of the symptoms which people fail to recognize to connect with a hormonal imbalance of course there are lot of other symptoms as well like heavy breathing like mood swings which occur during the phase of menopause so we were talking about milk being one of the main factors for this to happen another factor which is adding external sources of steroid into our body is the meat industry again in the industrial food culture where we are trying to un so much meat on a regular basis it's become impossible to do naturally steroid as a result of these steroid injections the animal starts putting weight faster and starts eating more and more so for example let's say a chicken which is supposed to gain adulthood which is supposed to become a full size chicken which can be used in the meat industry it should actually take 2 years but now where do we have time to take care of each chicken for 2 years it's happening in a short span of 3 to 4 months so within 3 to 4 months the steroids being pumped into the body and the chicken growing to a size where it is profitable for them to eat kill and sell so because of these kind of hormones being injected even in the meat and so of the external hormones external sources through milk through meat entering our body are causing a complete imbalance in the hormones so basically we spoke about yes sorry dr tanna uh, yes there just seems to be a slight uh, uh, network issue from your end uh, perhaps if we just switch to audio only uh, for, for a bit of okay time, then we can switch back to video again uh, okay many people are uh, saying we, there is a bit of breakage so if you don't mind okay. can we switch the video for a bit and then turn it back yes. on again give me a yeah hello uh, hello everybody uh, yeah the voice is breaking from dr farala's hand i think uh, if she switches off the video that could help uh let let me try to uh, join another network give me a minute i'll try with uh... yeah i think kushal is uh, joined dr farala you may join uh, through his phone or something like that participants we apologize for the technical issues please be patient with us <coughs> dr sarala is trying to connect through a different network and hopefully it would solve the problem Well, Dr. Sarala, we are trying to log in from a different uh, network, and in the meantime, there is. Uh, I would like to make a few points, and we have sent a link to our WhatsApp group. If you could join that WhatsApp group, it is purely voluntary. You can exit uh, whenever you wish, and uh, any follow-up communications will be uh, 
uh, posted in the WhatsApp group. Suppose if any questions are answered in this session, you can post in the WhatsApp group and we will get back to you. Uh, if you can't uh, get the answer, then we will either go back to Dr. Sarala or Dr. Khadar and uh, post the answer so that everybody uh, will be uh, getting the knowledge through that WhatsApp group. So, Janikisha, would you like to add something uh, while Dr. Sarala is still joining? Uh, yes, of course, yes, perhaps. Uh, let me fill in the gap. Um, Thank you for all uh, for this uh, for your patience during uh, this technical glitch. Uh, we're trying to resolve it. Uh, I can see Dr. Sarala has actually joined using uh, <laughs> Dr. Kader's phone. Uh, I'm trying to uh, unmute her so she can uh, come online. For a moment, I'll unmute everybody and uh, try. Oh, I, I no, no, no. I am in a different place. Sarla oh, Dr. Kader, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I would nice like to hear to you as well. I, I would like to stay muted. Right, okay, that's fine, sorry. I thought it was Dr. Sarla using your phone. <laughs> no, the, uh, Mr. Kushal has joined, Chanika, sir. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she no, Dr. Sarla is on now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yeah. Kadar, for joining. It's our pleasure to have you here. Yeah. I'll uh, summarize things at the end. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sarla, it's over to you now. Yeah, uh, am I audible now? Is yeah, it it's better? better. Definitely better. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Uh, so we were speaking about the hormonal imbalance and the effects we are seeing in the society of late. We spoke about a reduced sperm count and we also spoke about PCOD in women. So combining these two issues together, I think an obvious problem which we are all facing of late is infertility. So when the egg production is not happening properly, the sperms are not being generated well. So a result of both of these together is becoming a problem of infertility. And of course, the mushrooming of infertility centers, which we are seeing all around us. And it's a sensitive issue for most people and they want to have their own child. So advantage being taken of the situation and money is being reaped in all artificial ways people trying to have babies and what happens when we have so many artificial things happening is they are compromising with the health of the baby at the end so i think we have spoken a lot about the problems let's move on to what is more important how we can solve these problems so now that we have a little understanding about what is causing the hormonal imbalance, we can now think of solutions. So the first thing which would be obvious is to stop the products which are causing an imbalance inside our body, which would be to completely avoid milk and milk products, excluding buttermilk and curd. So why I say this is when we are fermenting milk, with the help of lactobacillus into either buttermilk or curd, the bacteria have the capacity to degrade these steroids, remove the bad elements which were present in the milk and convert it into something which we are actually requiring. So other than the fermented products which are made from milk, like buttermilk, like butter, like ghee, these can be used, but avoid all the direct products of milk. For example, paneer is made directly from milk. So I would say avoid paneer. Don't use milk. Even having this little bit of milk in your coffee and tea is sufficient to continue the hormonal imbalance which has occurred in the body. And of course, we said another source of these external steroid hormones being from meat. So we need to avoid all meat related food stuff. So once we do this, we have eliminated the external source of hormones and now we need to give the body a chance to get itself into a balanced state. So the things which will help to regain this hormonal imbalance, the hormonal balance which we have lost 
of course the first thing being millets so how do millets help in hormonal imbalance and thyroid was one of the questions which i had received so amongst the five positive millets little millet is the best when it comes to hormone related issues so the little millet the fiber which is present in it it directly has the capacity to clean all these endocrine organs and stimulate their functioning to happen normally so this is how little millet especially all millets in general and especially little millet can help you to set right the hormonal imbalance in the body so we would suggest that eat 3 days of little millet in a week for all three meals and there are four more positive grains being foxtail millet barnyard millet brown top millet and kodo millet so these four need to be eaten for one day in a week i think i just uh, read a question yes paneer is made directly from milk without fermenting it so we need to avoid paneer as well so this is about the role of millet in setting right the hormonal imbalance next coming to the decoctions which can help in setting right the hormonal balance we have the decoctions made from tamarind leaves decoction from mango leaf we have sar spinach which we call as gongura or kundi soppu in telugu and kannada and we have pongemia leaves we have people leaves so a long list of decoctions which can help in setting right the hormonal balance so how do we need to consume these decoctions each of the leaves which are mentioned one week continuously we need to use one decoction early morning empty stomach so this is when the decoction is most effective in your body the body is receptive to the medicinal property in the leaves when it is on empty stomach so all you need is a 150 to 200 ml a tea cup size of this decoction so repeat these in cycles for at least 3 to 6 months and you will start seeing the differences so first would be to avoid the products which are causing the imbalance second to eat millets especially little millet and third is to use the decoctions the final one which is very important is of course to exercise so you may ask what is the relationship between exercise and hormonal balance so in our body there is like it's like a vicious cycle weight gain and hormonal imbalance hormonal imbalance causes weight gain weight gain again in turn stimulates an har a hormonal imbalance so to get out of this vicious cycle we need to make sure that we exercise regularly we walk especially walking is the best form of exercise for us yes i understand lot of people enjoy different forms of exercise like workout it may be gym it might be all different kinds of things i'm not saying they are not good for you but don't forget to walk so walking has been the most natural form of exercise which we don't need any hangama for we don't need to be taught as a kid itself we learn to walk and we just need to walk for at least 1 hour to 1 and a half hour in a day when we do this trust me it's not just the physical exercise which it is giving which will actually help in different setting right the hormones but also i said that stress is one of the main cause for hormonal imbalance so when we work on a regular basis the stress levels also come down and this itself has a huge role to play in setting right the hormonal balance so walking exercising will also be helping you to set back the hormonal balance so once we have seen the ways which we can correct the hormonal balance we need to understand many of them were asking me i've been doing it for 3 months when will i see results so these problems which have lasted from a long time people have accumulated this problem for so many years you need to be a little more patient it will take at least 6 months for you to get right the balance which was disturbed in the body 
the sad part is people would have had these problems from the age of 14 15 right starting from menarche the hormonal imbalance is there in the body but they don't approach a doctor they don't try to get it corrected until and unless they are in the age of the 25 30 age when they're going to get married this is when they start actually worrying about irregular cycles because then they're planning for the baby etc so right from the time it starts you need to give attention to it and make sure you set right these problems so i think i have touched upon all these subjects and i had received a list of questions and uh, do you want me to answer the questions or do you want to ask each question and uh, get into the answers so it is lakshmi or it is over to you uh, you please decide how you want to organize this q and a session so uh, um, first of all um, happy international yoga day dr sarla garu and uh, to everyone on the call um, yeah as you know uh, what i did was uh, we have around uh, 50 questions so i'll yes. summarize them by problem the yes. first everyone is interested is in weight loss so yes. they're asking uh, i'm not able to lose weight and um, i'm gaining weight after uterus is removed so the yes. first problem main thing was the weight loss uh, do you want me to go through all the five i've listed first yeah yeah i i yeah. think i had the questions okay. so let me answer it in i think i'll cover all of those questions yes. to yes, in yes, one yes. answer yes uh, so for when we are speaking about weight loss we have to address both the issues of hormonal imbalance and the glucose imbalance so there is uh, no way of uh, separating these two when we are talking about a weight loss especially. So first thing we need to set right the glucose imbalance. How are you gaining weight? It is the excess glucose in the body which our body is converting into fat which is accumulating in different parts leading to weight gain. So unless we set right the glucose balance, you will not reduce weight. So how do we reduce the weight? We need to first avoid all the sugar rich foods which we are eating, which are pumping glucose into the blood. That glucose level is spiking so much that the body is forced to convert it into fat. So we need to avoid all sugar, sugar based foods. The next thing is rice and wheat. Rice and wheat have absolutely no fiber in them. And because of this, they are pumping glucose into the blood within 30 minutes. So this again causing a sudden peak in glucose levels and that glucose being converted to fat. So you need to stop all sugar, rice and wheat products to set right the glucose imbalance. And you need to stop milk and meat for the sake of the hormonal imbalance. So, of course, when we are stopping these products, you will ask, what is the alternative? What do we eat? So, make millets as your staple grains. All the five positive millets are good for you to set right the glucose imbalance. When it comes to weight loss, kodo millet is specifically helping to reduce weight. So if you have excessive weight and you're trying to lose weight, you can use two days of little millet, two days of kodo millet, and one day each of the other three positive millets. So for the first three months, I would suggest you to use the hormonal imbalance protocol of the decoctions. And for the next three months, the weight loss protocol for the decoctions. I think we'll be sharing a link for the book which has a list of decoctions for each specific condition with you. And uh, you can look into the link for uh, better clarity on the decoctions for each condition. So that would be relating to the weight loss questions. And after uh, uterus has been removed, a lot of people are asking about that. So only the uterus being removed, there is still a chance of setting the hormone balance in the body. If your ovaries have been retained, if both the ovaries have also been removed with the uterus, then it's difficult to get the natural balance. It's impossible to get the natural balance again. But even so, consuming this protocol, consuming millets and these decoctions will help in various other forms and will prevent the uh, weight gain from happening. We cannot expect a normal hormone cycles inside the body, of course. 
but other ways you will lose weight because of millets and the decoctions. Thank you, Dr. Sarla. The next one is, uh, I just put it very short and simple, uh, role of millets to cure thyroid, PCOD, and PCOS. I think you explained this yes. already in the call, but do you want to say more yes. about it? Yes, uh, I already said that uh, the fiber in the millet directly helps to cleanse the endocrine organs themselves and stimulates them to work properly. Relating thyroid, I would like to add that the thyroid of late, everyone is thinking they have thyroid even if their TSH levels are just 6, 6.5. So we need to understand that just few years back, say 10 years back when we see the reports, when we go to a lab and see the report, normal range used to be TSH 8 to 10. And even within the past few years, that range has slowly been brought down from 8 to 6 to 4. Now in foreign countries, they say anything above 3.5 is abnormal. So this is actually not true. It is a what can I say, a means in which they are making more and more people becoming addicted to thyroid related uh, tablets. So it's a very huge business that every single day, uh, early morning, a tablet has to be taken. So and once you're diagnosed with thyroid, they say it's a lifelong continuous treatment which you require, which is also absolutely not true. By following this protocol, Hundreds, thousands of people have gotten rid of thyroid-related complaints. So you do not need to worry as long as your TSH is under 12. Only about 12 is the problem going to happen. So until then, you do not need to take any medication. Just with the correct food and the protocols being followed, you can easily solve your thyroid-related complaints. Thank you, Dr. Sarla. Third one is the menstrual cycle. As you explained, uh, irregular periods, heavy bleeding, uh, spotting after every three to four days, and um, severe cramps on the first two days and not able to work on those days. Um, so, All these are different symptoms of hormonal imbalance. So the solution would be the same for all of these. Just follow the protocol. And specific for the menstrual cramps and menstrual pain, uh, for immediate result, I mean, uh, during the two, three days of experiencing pain, you can use the decoction of methi seeds and the decoction of jeera. Alternatively, morning one, evening one, or even if the pain is very severe, you can even use the decoctions every hour so that you will be able to reduce the pain. It will help temporarily, immediate relief of the pain. And on the long run, when you set the hormone balance correctly in your body, you will get get rid of the problem permanently. Okay. I know most of the people here are all elderly women and, you know, more than age 30. But I just want to ask one question for the younger generation, you know, 10 years, 12, 15 years, teenagers, who, who, who say no for everything. They are like pizza, burger kind of a thing. So what is the best millet we can introduce to them? Little millet. Little millet would be the best to start on uh, millets. It's the uh, most uh, neutral in taste, I can say, so that you don't feel you're eating something different. It's very similar to rice. It's, it's kind of white cream in color also. So that also plays a huge role for people to start accepting millets. So when you're starting, you can start with little millet. It's even the easiest to digest. So start with little millet and once you get used to it, you can go in to the others. Okay. Uh, the next, the fourth common thing um, I've noted here is uh, diabetes. Um, how to avoid type 1, yes. type 2 diabetes and uh, already following Dr. Kadavali's food protocol, but my BP is low um, and one is saying, why am I still uh, heavily bleeding? And we just got one, uh, one text in the uh, group chat that uh, their daughter is five years old and having type 1 diabetes. Uh, when she enters the age of puberty, how will it affect her sugar levels? Yes. So I, I think I had also read a question about gestational yeah. diabetes as well. Yeah. So diabetes is a 
is like the direct effect of the glucose imbalance in which the glucose levels start becoming high in the blood so of course the solution would first everyone knows to stop eating sugar and again rice and wheat stick to the five positive millets they have a fiber range from 8 to 12.5% so what this fiber does is it holds back the carbohydrate and doesn't allow your body to digest it soon and release all the glucose at once we and steadily over a range of 5 to 6 hours so your glucose levels don't spike there's a gradual maintenance of a required level of glucose in the blood so by consuming millets regularly sticking to the five positive millets you'll easily be able to get back the glucose balance and the duration of course depends on how severe your diabetes is and how long you have already had it young people can get themselves cured completely sooner older age and if you have had it for a longer time it takes almost up to it can take up to 2 years for you to get a complete glucose balance you will start seeing the results within 6 weeks but up to 2 years to get a complete cure i can say cure many people have stopped insulin stopped their medication gradually and even now are having correct levels of hba1c correct fasting postprandial levels and completely normal when they're sticking to the millet diet and exercising regularly so even gestational diabetes during throughout the pregnancy stick to millets it's very good for the baby's growth as well especially foxtail millet can consumed in the first trimester ensures that the baby's development happens very well shouldn't be a problem and post delivery i think automatically many of them get back to normal see but even if you are not getting back to normal see consuming millets will ensure that there is yes i think we can take the next question okay um i think uh, kushi ji you got the uh, answer to your question uh, the last one i've got here is about menopause so what what change what are, what do we expect before menopause and what do we expect after menopause when i when i say expect means what pains or what signs or whatever it is and uh, what should we do and also there's an additional question in the chat just now dr sarla how to overcome yes. early menopause at 40 <laughs> yes so like early menarche has become a huge problem of late we're seeing a trend of early menopause and many people rejoice of because of this because they think they can be done with the monthly pain and the monthly difficulties they're going through but what we need to remember is these regular cycles are actually protecting our heart so women earlier had a tendency to not develop heart related cholesterol related complaints because the female hormones are protecting them men had a higher chance of heart attack and cholesterol related complaints than women but now because of the early menopause we are also becoming prone to these conditions and of course bone health joint pain someone else had asked that they are developing after menopause lot of joint complaints so after menopause what happens is the calcium when in the body the metabolism gets a little imbalanced and because of this the body starts absorbing calcium from the bones into the blood to for its requirement to fulfill its requirement the bones start getting dissolved of its calcium so we need to provide the body with sufficient quantity of calcium during this menopausal period that is the only extra precaution which you need to take other than the regular hormone balance protocol to be followed the extra thing that um, women during and pre and post menopause need to do is take an extra dose of calcium i don't mean supplements natural sources of calcium which and everyone again would think that milk as soon as we say calcium everyone equates it to milk but milk was the 
source of the problem in the first place. So we need to understand that milk and calcium are not equate. You shouldn't equate them. There are a lot of other natural sources of calcium. For example, sesame seeds have eight times more calcium than milk. Yet no one consumes them. They actually think of it as something bad when it's related to menstrual cycles. It causes increased bleeding and it causes early menarche. Is what we all actually believe, which is completely not true. So eating one teaspoon of calcium, uh, one teaspoon of sesame seeds, once or twice a week is sufficient. You can eat it directly in the form of sesame seeds or make it into a laddu and eat or you can powder it and use it like a chutney powder or anything like that. So sesame is a very good source of calcium and buttermilk and curd of course will supply calcium for you. And another good source of calcium is makhana seeds. I'm, uh, I think it's quite popular in North India but less known in South India but the lotus seeds, makhana it is called. Very tasty, just like popcorn, even kids will enjoy it. It's a very good source of calcium and I would suggest everyone eat it once a week and you will have good amount of calcium. Even ragi milk can be consumed for calcium. Yeah, that's exactly. the only extra thing which women around the menopausal age need to do. Dr. Sarla, there is a common question here. Several people have asked, I think, uh, maybe it might have covered, but yes. people are asking. The question is about hair loss, so rapid hair yeah. loss, uh, hair growth problem. Yes. Answer on that. Yes. Yes. So, uh, hair fall, the causes, one, of course, being hormonal imbalance. Another important cause which we have to uh, take care of is the plastic in our food. So, we are consuming... Our milk comes in plastic, water in plastic bottles, water filters are plastic. We are using plastic containers for cooking, for reheating, even to carry our food to the office, to schools. So these nanoparticles of plastic entering our food through various sources. And what these do, they form a deposit all along the intestines. So when this happens, our gut cannot absorb the nutrients from our food. The first thing, we are not eating food which has good amount of nutrients. And on top of that, we have a layer of plastic in the intestines which is not allowing the existing nutrients to be absorbed. So to solve the hair fall issue, we need to completely stop using plastic when it comes to our food and liquid related usage. So by doing this, we will actually allow the body to cleanse itself of the plastic coating inside, get the micronutrients like selenium, like zinc, which are very essential for hair growth, and then our hair will start regrowing. Immediately, what you could do is, again, stop using a plastic comb. The electrostatic energy which combing using a plastic comb does pulls the, makes the uh, hair roots weaken and pulls out the hair. Start using a wooden comb. Even this will go a long way in reducing hair fall. Other immediate things which you can do, of course, you can apply onion juice. You can apply hibiscus leaf hair mask, methi seeds. You can soak them uh, overnight, make them a paste, apply it to the hair as a hair pack for 15-20 minutes and wash it off. Uh, you can use amla powder. So a lot of natural uh, products which you can use as a hair pack again to stimulate hair growth when there is an immediate uh, requirement. Um, I mean, when there is severe hair fall happening. On a deeper level, you need to set right the hormonal imbalance and stop plastic so that you have the micronutrients required for hair growth and all these together should solve the problem. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Sarlaji, I got only one question on fibroids. Uh, Lakshmiji from Hindupur is asking, uh, she yes. has got the fibroids removed from yes. surgery, but that's still... Yes, because... yes it is a, uh, an expression of the body of the hormonal imbalance. So nothing different which needs to be done. The same hormone imbalance protocol which can be followed and the growth of the new fibroids should stop. Even the old fibroids will start shrinking. In a period of six months to two years, the problem should be solved. Yeah, Dr. Sarah, I have one question here. Yes. 
Yeah, is it common to get a, a menstrual cycle of 22 to 24 days? And uh, is it, uh, I mean, can we just leave it like that, or is there any way to bring it to 28 to 30 day cycle? I think 26 days to 35 days is still falling under the range of normalcy. 22 would, would be a little early, uh, too frequent, uh, I would say. And yes, following the protocol, it's surely possible to set it right. So around, a range from 26 to 35 is still normal. Okay, thank you. I think I uh, have a few. I have Sorry. a few questions. I think I saw a lot of questions regarding soy, soy products. So let me answer that. Yes. So uh, the main problem when you're using soy beans, soy milk, soy chunks, anything, soy in any form is that it is genetically modified. So genetically modifying something is the farthest from nature which we can go. You are playing with the deepest level of the genes. So when you have something which is genetically modified, you have no idea what kind of effect it can have in the body. It can be a reason for cancer. There is not enough research to establish what the effects are. But surely you can know that anything which is so unnatural as even the genes being modified cannot be good for you. So the problem with soy is basically that it is genetically modified and nothing else. So even occasionally using it, some person has said, can I use it occasionally? So even occasionally is sufficient to trigger the problems in the body. So it's best to avoid not just soy, all genetically modified foods. Yeah, Dr. Sorrell, in the same way, many people have asked about oats because the oats is so common in breakfast at the yes. in the Western world. So they're yes. constantly asking this question, is it okay? Is it okay to use now every yes. now and then? Can you please? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, oats, oats falls under the category of neutral grains uh, alongside ragi, jowar, bajra, which are also quite commonly used. So, of course, it's better than rice and wheat. Rice and wheat have a fiber percentage of 0 0.2 and 1.2, respectively. So, the neutral grains have a fiber range from 2 to 4 percent. So, this slows down the release of glucose to an extent of 2 to 3 hours. So, they are better than rice and wheat, but not as good as the positive millets. So what we would say is if you are healthy, if you don't have any serious chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, then it's okay, cancer also. So it is okay to use the neutral grains once in a while. Positive millets form the main staple grains. Once a week, twice a week, using the neutral grains is not bad for you. And if you are completely healthy, have no problems like kids growing up, no problem, then they can use neutral grains in, in their diet. They can incorporate them as well. The more the variety you eat, the better it will be. So to, in short, to answer, if you are diabetic, if you have any chronic serious conditions, then it's best to avoid oats and the other neutral grains. Stick to the five positive millets until you become healthy. I'm not saying forever. So if you strictly do this for six to eight months, your problem should start getting salt and then you can incorporate the neutral grains as well. Yeah. And Dr. Sarala, I would like to add some point, especially in the perspective of Western world. When you say oats, yes. we tend to buy from supermarkets and these days supermarket oats are all like coated with plastic, some kind of preservatives yes. on the shelf life. So I seriously uh, want to yes. about uh, using the oats, although they seem to be healthy, but uh, they have to be more practical. processed, again being processed. Yes. So I'm very, very uh, skeptical even recommending on occasions also. Yes, but again, yes. people please exercise your own uh, due diligence. Yes. yes. Thank you, Dr. Sarala. Yeah. So, I also, uh, I think a few more questions which I had noted down from what I had sent. Uh, one regarding uh, the role of yoga, I think someone had asked. So yeah. today being uh, International Yoga I'm Day. I'm going I to come to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, of course, yoga has its own role both at the level of the mind. I said hormonal imbalance having a great origin in the stress which every day we are facing today. 
so yoga playing a major role to deal with that stress to reduce that stress and of course even on the physical level yoga will surely help to solve the hormone imbalance related issues but the specific question was about endometriosis so endometriosis is a condition where uh, the uterine tissue which is being present in places it should not be so uterine tissue should be found only inside the cavity of the uterus but in endometriosis it has migrated to the ovary or migrated to the outside the uterine cavity even up to as far as the lungs and the nose sometimes so this is a pathological condition and for this you would require treatment i would suggest you to go in for treatment for endometriosis and why following the protocol so uh, it is a condition which requires treatment i would if it's just pcod i would say you don't need medication just stick to the protocols and you will can cure yourself but something like endometriosis i would say treatment is required uh, dr sil that's the part of the questions i have got with me so uh, thank you very much dr sarla for answering all the questions and uh, it's a uh, nice uh, seeing you <laughs> today yeah. And can I just uh, butt in and ask uh, Dr. Sarla uh, a bit of um, in, in input from you about uh, the use of oils in, in general for uh, hormonal, hormonal balance? You know, what are the best oils and what kind of uh, protocols they are? So a bit of brief on that. Yes. So uh, the role oils, uh, we can say that the base Again, we seem to have life of issues. Of the steroid hormones in our body, they are made from fat. So fat is convertible. Uh, am I audible? Uh, slight issues, but now you, I think you're back on now. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, I would say that oils and fat which we give our body are the raw material from which our steroid hormones are made inside the body. so providing the body with the right kind of fat is very essential to have the right steroidal hormone balance inside our body so when we speak about the refined oils of late they are completely unnatural adulterated with mineral oil adulterated with animal fat again which will have steroid content in it and all these again adding to the problem so the best way to extract natural oils would be to use bull driven ganis in which there is extraction of natural oils at a standard temperature and without the use of heavy pressure so this would be the best way to extract oils and these are the true oils the true fat which we require for our body many people think all fat is bad which is not at all true we do require good fat in our body to stay healthy and the way to provide it would be using natural cold pressed bull driven extracted oils in a wooden gun that's uh, that's brilliant um, there's one other uh, question that's popped up on our whatsapp group from a, yes. a, a person who is here in the session his name is anand he says uh, yes. what is the solution for cold stones Uh, if we go for allopathy they suggest only surgery which we want to avoid yes. so any inputs yes. on that for gallstones yes so gallstones and kidney stones both together we have uh, certain decoctions which help for example we have uh, punarnava decoction we have ranapala i'm not sure of the english names i think i'll be sharing the link with everyone you can uh, see the translated uh, names and of course the banana stem juice very important to dissolve stones gall stones and kidney stones so uh, surgery is not the only solution it's not a good solution at all you should definitely try consuming a strict millet based diet with these decoctions in rotation and many people have been able to get rid of their stones without any problem Uh, that's brilliant uh, and chanakya garu uh, yes, there is one important question i mean uh, i think no, go on, go on. this is about yes. hormone replacement therapy how good it is and should we go for it uh, 
So the question is being asked by a few people actually. Yes. Uh, no, I would not suggest hormone replacement therapy. Uh, it is at the end of the day something unnatural, some steroids which you are taking into the body. I think uh, providing the body with the right food, good nutritive food and enough calcium will help to go through the period of menopause without difficulties and there is no requirement of, again, already uh, there is a state of hormonal imbalance. Adding to that imbalance by taking uh, hormone replacement therapy is not required. Yeah. And there is one... I think there was... A, yeah, yeah, another question I, I read about the contraceptive uh, pills which are being uh, taken quite often now. So, uh, when we are taking contraceptive pills, even if it is prescribed, again, it is, of course, a hormone, steroid hormone, which we are ingesting into our body in actually quite a huge dose. And, of course, it's going to cause an imbalance in the body. We are actually suppressing completely the body's hormone cycles and replacing it with external steroid. So, we are making the body stop its own functioning. So it is not at all a good idea to use these hormonal tablets or implants as a means of contraception. I would not at all suggest this. And uh, even the medication which is usually prescribed for PCOD is again the same contraceptive pills. So you take the hormone tablets for 21 days and wait for the uh, withdrawal bleeding for seven days. So it's in no way correcting your body's imbalance. It's only artificially providing the hormone from an external source. And again, when you stop the hormone, there is bleeding. So it's not correcting the internal imbalance. It's not helping your ovaries to release the egg. It's not uh, naturally having your endometrium to become thick during the menstrual phase and shed as periods. It's just an artificial it's an apparent menstrual cycle. It's not an actual menstrual cycle happening in the body. So there is no point of actually using this medication. It's actually the whole idea is supply it from outside for three months and then hope that the body adjusts on its own and sets into the same cycle after you stop the medication, which very, very rarely happens. So I wouldn't suggest using contraceptive pills either for contraception or even as a treatment for PCOD. It's better to slowly and steadily set right the hormonal imbalance inside the body. And as a contraceptive measure, the best would be, of course, to use condoms. And uh, probably avoid when, if you have a regular cycle, you will be able to have natural conception by knowing the correct uh, time in which you are fertile. So avoiding sex during this time would be the best way to have natural contraception. So there's one more uh, question that uh, you touched upon uh, previously. But there's one specific yes. question asked by one gentleman called Anand again. He said his daughter is 10 years old and uh, she's, uh, she's attained puberty. So what kind of foods uh, that he can uh, put her on? What kind of millet uh, protocol? Uh, so, uh, as long as she's having uh, regular cycles, uh, the uh, early menarch as such, we don't need to treat anything in her as such. In general, follow the regular millet diet. There's no specific millet which she needs to eat more. If she's having regular cycles, all five millets can be consumed, even the neutral grains she can have. That's not an issue, but avoid milk and milk products and meat. That will add to the problem of hormone imbalance so avoid these that's the only thing she needs to do. Sure, Dr. Tarla. we have another 15 minutes what i'm hoping is to ask uh, let's let a few people ask uh, questions sure. uh, can sure. i request everyone to raise their hand so i can unmute your mic so uh, you can ask the question somebody has my... asked a question about yeah. headaches headaches all oh, right okay uh, really i'll let from... Yeah, let uh, Dr. Sarala answer that. And uh, just before I uh, give the hand, uh, the mic back to Dr. Sarala, uh, please keep your questions to as simple as possible so we can get as many questions answered. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Sarala, regarding headaches. Uh, any specific question regarding headache or in general? You want no, it's, it's on the chat saying, please suggest to get a relief from exertion headache, having it since five years. 
okay so when we are speaking about a uh, headache just because of stress i think what the person is saying so deep breathing pranayama meditation and yoga should surely help especially there is a pranayama called nadi shodhana pranayama i think on youtube if you just say nadi shodhana you will be able to uh, get the correct procedure of doing it so you can uh, look into that so regularly practicing pranayama for 15 to 20 minutes a day will help uh, in reducing your stress headache mm -hmm. and when we speak about migraine headaches a lot of people have gotten rid of years of migraine headache by using sesame seeds all you need to do is 1 teaspoon of sesame seeds roast it until it pop it makes a popping sound in an iron kadai and then eat it raw early morning on empty stomach just the seeds chew it well lot of is 3 to 4 minutes chew it chew it chew it and eat it uh, swallow the whole thing drink a big glass of water and don't eat anything for half an hour so do this for 21 days continuously and a lot of people getting rid of their migraine headache by doing this you can repeat this 21 days after 3 months a gap of 3 months and then again repeat it and you should be able to get rid of your migraine headache uh i'm unmuting kushi uh kushi you can ask your question now just a moment i'm trying to unmute you yeah yes, go ahead hello. hello hello yes uh we wanted to know our daughter she's 5 years old okay. and she has type 1 diabetes we have okay. been doing the millet diet the protocol mm -hmm. for last 10 months okay. and we have noticed all of a sudden her shots have increased and mm -hmm. uh, they've gone up and we are wondering why they have increased we are thinking i don't know maybe she's growing but um don't know how much of that is part of the shots increasing and uh, uh we are just wondering um you know we've been doing it now for 10 months that we are been uh, following the diet and we are we are hoping that she will be able to leave her shots but instead she has increased some shots Yeah. So yeah, uh, type one diabetes is a little more difficult to deal with compared to type two diabetes. And as you correctly mentioned, in the growing phase, it will there will be ups and downs because the body's requirement keeps increasing, and as they grow, their body whole body mass keeps increasing. So uh, there will be a few ups and downs, and completely stopping insulin may not be possible in all cases. But as time progresses, you should be able to uh, fix a minimal dose. Say ten units, eight units is all would be required instead of lot of them using forty units of insulin, forty five units of insulin, which uh, as they grow, the dosage just keeps on increasing in a regular stream. That is what usually happens. but we have few cases where they have been able to stop insulin completely uh, but then again lot of type 2 diabetic children being classified as type 1 this is also happening so every child who develops diabetes is categorized as type 1 but there are lot of children who are developing type 2 diabetes and in such cases we have been completely able to get rid of insulin in type true type 1 there might be a minimum dose which would be required but this dose will be minimal so that there will not be severe side effects of constant use of insulin so i think 10 months is still a short period given the uh, depth of the situation in which the child is right now so stick on to it and as her uh, development settles down i think around puberty and adolescence then we should be able to have a stabilized fix a stabilized dose so it's a long run we are speaking about not a short term problem so uh, nothing to become anxious about stick on to it and it will surely have its benefits especially in this age a lot of growth stunting happening in kids who are diabetic type 1 diabetic so all those problems and problem of not being active being dull drowsy the sugar levels falling too much that the kid becomes unconscious especially when they're sleeping so all these problems will surely be avoided when you are uh, using millets for you will relate to these 
problems much more than anyone else would not know about these problems of uh, type 1 diabetic space. I think you are quite aware of all these things. So uh, stick on to it. It's a long process and we'll, I'm sure she will be benefited. And make sure she's active and not all the time indoors playing well, walking. I think making kids walk is difficult. Let them play outdoors, be active physically. I Thank hope you, I answered your question. Next yeah. is uh, Dr. Avon Nadaraj Palinyapun. I have unmuted you. Can you please ask your question? Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the great session, sir. I have a general question, Dr. Sarala. Your father. Yes. Uh, regarding... Uh, um, Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, based on last couple of months. I'm uh, listening to the, the medicine and everything. So what I realized that they recommended not using red chili or green chili, any, any type of chili. They recommended using pepper. Uh, mm -hmm. And so they talked about they don't use the tamarind, I use a kudampuli, a malabar tamarind, uh, the kampoja. And uh, I'm trying to use it. So, since uh, Indian cooking is very hard to avoid a red chili or this, <laughs> then I saw your um, your videos and everything. Your father is also recommending using those things. I'm just wondering how it will be interfere our gut microbiomes and then. Uh, uh, is this two things will be a toxic or some level of uh, absorption problems or good nutrients into the guts and then the healthy gut microbiome? That's my question. Thank you. Okay. So uh, regarding uh, other diet suggestions, I, I don't want to comment about what others are suggesting. But uh, what we suggest is anything which is natural in moderation is not going to be bad for you. Of course, if you're eating too I see it's going to cause gastric related troubles, it's going to cause acidity and such troubles. But in moderation, spice is not bad for you. I think you're uh, speaking about the video of microbial imbalance where we said that uh, eating certain green chili will help to improve the bacterial content. Is, is that what you're referring to? No, I thought that there's some kind of a chemical in the cayenne that giving the, the irritations and that's called giving a problem the microbial imbalance in the guts is that will interfere no, no 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 uh, the green chili the capsaicin in it is not going to harm the microbial imbalance in the gut actually uh, on the contrary there are uh, certain probiotics in present in the green chili uh, in, it has been a tradition in some households where they, when they're making milk uh, into curd, when they're curdling it, they put one green chili or one red chili. So the probiotics in the chili help for the milk to curd. So they are actually going to help your uh, gut my, uh, microbes rather than destroy them. Too much capsaicin is going to erode the gastric lining. That's the only problem if you are using, overusing it. No, okay. Nothing, uh, no harm which it is causing to the microbes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sarla. I'm unmuting uh, Sunita D'Souza. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, so, Sunita, you're on. Sunita? Uh, we can move on. I'll uh, I'll go for Vijay. Uh, Vijay has a question. Vijay, I'm trying to unmute you. Go for it, Vijay. Vijay, go for it. Hi, uh, I'm Kalyani. Uh, this is regarding my gastric problem from last year. Uh, I'm with the, on the gastric problem. Suddenly it arose. Once they have given me some antibiotics here, uh, so I have taken it. After that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, my gastric was severe. Until then, I didn't have anything. I suddenly I felt like some heartburns and everything. So I went to the doctor. He said, like, uh, uh, this is uh, the gastric uh, problem. So he gave me an uh, gastric one. So I took it for almost two months. Uh, it's fine then. But again, uh, it started... Uh, flaring up again. So whenever mm -hmm. I get that problem, I'm feeling like literally very weak, sick, yes. tired. I couldn't even get up. So at the beginning, I couldn't realize like that is that was a gastric problem. So 
so i now again it's flaring up every two months three months like that even though i'm not yes. taking anything i mean the spicy food or whatever it is okay mm. okay kalyani uh, let's uh, dr sarala address that yeah so i think uh, what the antibiotics have done is it has caused a microbial imbalance it has wiped out the good bacteria which are present in the gut and thus disturb your digestive process uh, a solution to this would be of course to settle the microbial balance by consuming millet porridge fermented millet porridge uh i would uh, direct you towards uh, one of our videos on our channel millet magic i would uh, uh, send you the link i think uh, you have a group and we will share the link of the channel it's called millet magic and we have an in detail discussion about the topic of microbial imbalance today we were concentrating on hormonal imbalance so i've not really spoken much about the microbial imbalance so you can uh, refer to that video and consuming uh, there's also another video on how to make this fermented porridge the do's and the don'ts so you can look into this video and consuming the fermented millet porridge for continuously 3 weeks should help to set right the problem immediately and after that you can maintain the microbial balance by consuming millet fermented porridge once a week twice a week and stick on to millets and your gastric will easily be solved uh the decoctions which will help you immediately would be again uh, mustard seed uh, decoction uh, jeera decoction uh, pudina decoction uh, mint leaves that is and betel leaf if you have betel leaf is also very effective for gastric complaints and i think i mentioned methi leaves or methi seeds these decoctions will help you uh, for the gastric complaints immediately Yeah, Sunita is back on. Uh, Sunita, go for it, please. Uh, we can't hear you, Sunita. So, uh, if Sunita can't join, I have a question on behalf of Manjinal. Unfortunately, yeah. he has some language issues, so I would like to ask on his behalf. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. Manjinal is asking. His mother is sixty year old, and she is suffering from allergy at urethra. So, what are the solutions mm -hmm. for that, please? I I didn't get you allergy and uh, allergy and pain uh, while urinating. Okay. This is for her. Uh, and she's sixty years old. Okay. So allergies are mainly whether it is uh, another person had also asked about sneezing on waking every day morning. He has sneezing for three to four hours. That was one of the questions I had received. So that is also a form of allergy. Yeah. you might also be referring to skin allergies where you get itching and uh, you have eruptions on the skin so all forms of energy uh, allergies have their root in the blood so the immune system is over reacting to a stimulus then we call it as an allergy so most people think the problem is either on the skin or in the you know, ant related complaints but it's actually in your blood so you need to purify your blood kodo millet will be the specific millet for this problem so more of kodo millet in your diet and uh, for immediate relief the decoctions which can help in allergies especially is the small onions the uh, onions which we use to make sambar these are very uh, good as an anti allergic have very good anti allergic properties even the juice if it's a skin related allergy you can even apply the juice on the skin the itching will subside immediately so you can either make a decoction of these onions just slice three or four of them up boil it in water and filter the water and consume it or you could uh, soak them in buttermilk consume the entire onion and the buttermilk in the night time that will also help to reduce allergies and uh, one last question from uh, sukumar uh, before we close it i know that we are running just a minute now sukumar yeah. uh, hi um, uh, hi dr sarala i'm asking uh, this question on behalf of my wife um, yeah she's has after second okay. delivery she has a unique symptoms like uh, uh, she is feeling very cold even the temperatures outside or inside is uh, mid 30s 30s uh, she will feel very cold mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I do like all the whole day. It is not uh, as specific part of the day. It it is. Uh, I mean, she can't bear. She have to cover uh, with comforters. Okay. Uh, she she Any other now. complaints or is this? Any other oh, complaints or only this? Only this. Only this. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a very uh, out of the blue thing which I'm hearing. I've never heard about this before. But mm-hmm. I think it is an expression of hormone imbalance itself. Post delivery, there's a lot of uh, turmoil going inside the body with the hormones, and I think uh, if the hormone balance is reset by following the protocol, it should solve the problem. And I'm, I'm not sure. Just by hearing this much, I cannot uh, understand okay. everything about it. But uh, on superficially, I think this is the problem. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you uh, for that, Sukumar. And I think uh, we shall try and wrap this up because I know it's quite late there as well in India for you, Doctor Sarala. Um, no first of all, I would like to thank you for taking so much time and spending time with our audience here. Uh, quite a lot of questions were answered, and I'm sure one, there are a few I think which we couldn't take, but we will try and summarize them and send them to you. And uh, sure. on obtaining your answers, we'll then uh, distribute it to them. Um, I would also like to draw the attention of the audience to uh, Dr. Sarla's uh, very, very nice um, YouTube channel called Millet Magic. Uh, you can get a lot of recipes uh, from the channel. She, she, does, she cooks them herself and I'm sure she tries them before she then puts the recipe on the channel. Uh, so you could have They're a look eating at... it every day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, so you could, uh, you could try that uh, channel definitely. Uh, and also, um, uh, Dr. Sarla's husband is into producing a lot of natural oils dri- with the you know, bull-driven oils, what we call. Uh, hopefully, we should be importing some to the Western world, to UK and USA very soon. We are working very closely with uh, Mr. Kushal. And I'm sure uh, we will have a lot of assistance from Dr. Kadhaf and uh, Dr. Sarla on these aspects as well. Hopefully, we should have uh, some uh, millets, uh, organically grown millets uh, coming through the same channels. Um, and also, um, hopefully, uh, we should do this uh, quite often uh, whenever possible at your end, Dr. Sarala, uh, because we sure, had a lot sure. of interest and uh, I'm sure there are some questions that we could have answered again. Um, I, I one, also want to add that uh, the entire session, uh, will uh, we will be sharing it on Millet Magic, the recording, so you can listen to it again. If you have missed something, the whole session will be available on Millet Magic and a lot of other information videos also like the microbial imbalance and, and about oils in depth discussion and why we need to consume bull driven dani oils all these topics we have discussed on millet magic so i would encourage everyone to watch these videos and get an in depth knowledge we were able to discuss very few things right now so much more in detail you will be able to have on the youtube channel Yes, and also uh, on the channel, we have a lot of workshop videos of Dr. Sarala, which are quite in length with a lot of explanations using a lot of uh, board uh, and a lot of uh, analytics, uh, which is quite useful for um, us to understand in depth about uh, millets and a lot of health issues and um, remedies for it. Um, so you, you, are, you are adding quite a lot of content very regularly, Dr. Sarala. So anyone wanting to follow the channel, please subscribe to it. And you will get all the updates as, as and when Dr. Sarala posts uh, new updates. And also, uh, Dr. Kadar also uh, contributes towards it. So we can get his inputs as well. Um, for now, I think uh, we will close this session, Dr. Sarala. Thanks very much for this. And thank you, Lakshmi. And uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Satya and uh, Kalpana Garu. Uh, thanks for this evening. Um, have a nice evening, Dr. Sarla, and uh, please convey regards to Dr. Kadar and Kushal as well. Dr. Kadar, I'm watching actually. Thank you. Yes, very okay. Much. Good night, Dr. Kadar. Namaste Good to night. You, everybody, and thanks Namaste to everybody, everybody for attending this thank session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good thank night, you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sarla. Thank you. I'm closing the session for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.